Welcome to a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank, part 15, making and fitting the hollow stay. Before doing that though, for a bit of light relief I'm going to remove the fake door at the other side of the superstructure. Pretty much exactly in the same way as I removed the other side, without using too much heat, just enough to melt the soft solder, so I can remove this dummy door on the side. I'm going to replace it with a larger panel. This part, the original dummy door, can now be discarded. This video is all about fitting the hollow stay to the boiler. I'd just like to briefly discuss what the hollow stay is all about. This arrived in the post this morning, and I presume it is the aforementioned stay that I need. It was sent to me from Blackgate's Engineering, and I can tell that by the very good wrapping. So here we go again. Pass the parcel for one, using sharp implements. If you don't know what pass the parcel is, it's like a party game where you pass a parcel, the music stops, people open the parcel, and eventually when all the wrappings are removed, in the centre of the parcel, there is a surprise gift for the winner. Unless, of course, you happen to be at my daughter Emma's children's parties, when the hapless winner will receive something like an apple and even a box of very smelly cheese. Just a thing for an eight-year-old. In all of that wrapping was just this piece of copper tubing. This copper tubing goes from the back head to the front tube plate. So what's the back head? That's the back bit where the regulator is. And what's the front tube plate? Well, this is it. It's where all the tubes come out through the front. This hollow stay is for the steam blower, and it goes all the way through the boiler, from this bush on the tube plate to an identical bush on the back head. Over now to the lathe, I need to make two special fittings which will be silver soldered to the piece of tubing. I should really have used phosphor bronze for this, but I didn't have any the right diameter. One end of this fitting needs to be made from a piece of hexagon bar, and I didn't have any of that in phosphor bronze either, so I'm using brass. It's not the end of the world, and I'm sure this part will outlive me. There's a lot of talk of brass and boilers and de-zincification, but from my experience, that only really happens where oxygen is present in copious amounts. Recently I did a job on an engine where I needed to change the check valve and the check valve was completely corroded away. That's because it had been leaking, the leak had never been rectified and the combination of lime scale and oxygen and water corroded the fitting very badly in just under two years. The sequence that you're watching is something that I do very frequently so I don't see the need to narrate it here, for instance, as usual, I am threading the part, and to do this, I'm using my tailstock die holder substitute, which is a standard hand die holder, and to keep everything square, I'm using the tailstock fitted with a chuck to make sure it doesn't run out of line. Alternatively, I could have fitted this die into the tailstock die holder and wasted quite a lot of time. This thread is unusually 3 8 by 40 threads per inch. I need to make a pair of fittings which are quite similar but not identical for both ends of the hollow stay. In this clip I've just parted off the bit that I need. I've turned it round in the chuck and you will notice that I'm holding the component by the threads. This is not good practice. I need to turn down the other end of this part to a quarter of an inch in diameter, thread it quarter of an inch by 40 threads per inch to take a standard steam union. It would have been more sensible to fit a part into the chuck and thread it 3 8 by 40 threads per inch. Then I could have screwed the part into that to hold it while I machined the other end. But anyway, all's well that ends well, it was OK. And now it's into the outer part of the workshop, first of all to apply some Easy Flow number 2 flux, and then silver solder my part onto the end of this hollow stay. The silver solder that I'm using is called Silver Flow 55. And thanks to the magic of video editing, here's the finished job. Once the part had cooled sufficiently, I quenched it using some water. Then I went back into the main workshop to make the part for the other end of the hollow stay. Same principle as I've previously shown, except this one does not have a hexagon part in the middle. Instead, here I'm making a nut to go onto it after it's been fitted to the boiler. The thread, of course, is 3 8 by 40 threads per inch. Here I'm removing the sharp edges with a file, and now I'm parting it off. When parting off small components, it's a good idea to stop them from falling into the chip tray. 
and to prevent this I would normally use a drill shank as shown here. After silver soldering the second part that I made onto the hollow stay, now it's fun time. I recommend that you have to hand on the bench, written down on a piece of paper, at least the Samaritan's phone number. And possibly even the address of a local asylum could be useful. And why is that? Well, just continue watching the video. This bit is easy. A small amount of lubricating oil eases the passage of this first fitting through the bush on the back head. But this is where things go wrong. Now I need to continue screwing the hollow stay into the other bush on the smokebox tube plate end. I'm using my scriber in the hole and I occasionally just touch the hollow stay, but this is not the way to do it. Time I think for a top tip, because trying to do it this way causes insanity very quickly. And here's a top tip. Turn the boiler into such a position so the bush is at the bottom. Then you stand a much better chance of catching the end of the pipe with the scriber to guide it through the hole, like this. And before any viewers write in to tell me, yes I am aware of the split gasket on the wet header. I will do something about this shortly. What I'm currently doing is using a 3 8 by 40 threads per inch tap to clean the bush because the thread wasn't very good in there. I was having great difficulty getting the thread on the hollow stay to engage with the one in the bush. So after repeating the process of finding the hollow stay inside the boiler with the scriber, the thread now engages perfectly in the smoke box tube plate bush. All I need to do now is apply some Loctite 542 to the fitting on the back head and screw it in place. And because the threads on the back head and the smoke box tube plate are both 40 threads per inch, there's not a problem. This clip shows a washer fitted behind the nut, but the washer's a bit big. I'm going to dispense with that, because I didn't fit a washer at this end, and with the Loctite 542, it will seal fine anyway. The next part of the job is to fit the blower valve to the turret and connect this to the hollow stay using a piece of 5.32 of an inch diameter pipe. I bent the pipe using this very small pipe bender, made in China, of course, by a company called Microcosm. The web address is on screen at the moment. Because of its small physical size, it really is very useful. Here you can see how neat the bend is. The pipe from the steam tap to the hollow stay is very close to the regulator, but not that close that you would burn your fingers on it. So now you know what a hollow stay is. This hollow stay, of course, feeds the blower in the smoke box that blows a jet of steam up the chimney to draw the fire. And the benefits of using a hollow stay versus an external pipe that runs down the outside of the boiler, is that the steam going down the hollow stay will remain hot all the way to the blower nozzle in the smoke box, therefore avoiding condensation. This is a simple but very important part of a miniature steam locomotive. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.